Episode 1, The Word of God is Your Weapon. In this series, we're tackling interesting topics using the Word of God. Uh, the reason we're doing it like this is because Jesus often quoted scriptures against his opponents or to address a topic correctly in light of God's Word, and so on. He quoted scriptures to bring people to remembrance of the Bible and how Jesus fulfilled it. Matthew 27, 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Psalm 22, 1, to the chief musician upon Ajlath Shahar, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? John 15, 25. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Psalms 35, 19. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. And Psalm 69. 4. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. He used scriptures to rebuke the Pharisees. Matthew 12, 38, 42. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Matthew 19, 3, 9. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, and to put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Mark 12:10. And have ye not read this scripture? <laughs> the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. Mark twelve eighteen twenty seven. Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. And the second took her, and died, neither left he any seed, and the third likewise. And the seven had her, and left no seed. Last of all the woman died also. In the resurrection therefore when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do you not therefore err, because you know not the Scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven, and as touching the dead, that they rise. Have ye not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. And even though Satan tried to quote scriptures to test Jesus, Jesus used God's word appropriately to rebuke him. Matthew 4, 3. 10. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, 
and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So why use scriptures? Why use the word of God? Because it's the best weapon we can use. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Ephesians 6.17 And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Why else should we rely on the word of God? It not only defeats our enemies, it will finally give us peace. Isaiah 11, 1, 7. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. I wanted to keep quoting more and more scripture to prove my point, but let's look at it a piece at a time in this video series. We're going to be asking interesting questions and try using the Bible as the foundation, the main reference, the filter for what is right and wrong. As a preview, here are some of the topics we'll be covering. Is America against God? What is God's stance on stem cell research? Does the Bible say anything about cloning? Are military psychological operations an unjust method of warfare, according to God? What does God have to say about investing, stocks, money, cryptocurrency, etc.? So please look forward to those and many other topics in the future. I plan on uploading at least once a week, even if it's short. It will be something. And with that, I leave you for now. But... Let the Spirit of God be with you always. Amen. And see you next time.